Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jack in the Box High School Football Report. It is week one. A lot of teams believe this is their year, and some of them get to prove it right out of the gate. Like the Eastlake Wolves, they were in Monroe tonight. It is our Jack in the Box featured matchup. They were jumping up and down in Monroe. First score of many in this game. Monroe tied it early with a short touchdown run. That's Blake Rebar. Next possession tied at six. This time, Grady Robinson, the quarterback for Eastlake, with a keeper 54 yards later. He is in the end zone. They added the two-point conversion, so Eastlake was up 14 to six at that point. They took control before halftime. Jalen Bright with a quick touchdown run, and then right before the break, a shot to the end zone by Robinson. Zeros were on the clock, caught for a touchdown, so the Wolves led 28-14 at the break. We move ahead to the fourth quarter. Monroe with a phenomenal comeback in this one. Blake Rebar scored his fifth touchdown of the night to tie things up with 2.30 left. And that sent this one into overtime where Eastlake scored but had their extra point blocked. And Gio Fergoso, the sneak from a yard out from Monroe, all they need is the extra point to win the game. And there it is. It goes through in overtime. The Bears with a wild one, 42-41. That is a featured matchup knew coming in that it was going to be a close one. Good football team. Roberson is one of the best quarterbacks around, super athletic. We know if we had a chance, we're going to have to make a play late, and it was going to be a close one. And, man, this is close as it gets. Excuse me, yelling all game. Nothing better than winning in overtime. Like, being out here with my brothers, this is, this is what we train for. So all the summers, all the training, all the workouts, all the practices, all these up to this moment. It's amazing. Yeah, that kid had an amazing game, 166 yards rushing. He caught 70 yards in passes. He had five touchdowns. Okay, it is time once again for all of you at home to speak up. Which game would you like to see next week? The voting is brought to you by All City Fence, and all you got to do is head over to kairos7.com slash vote now or download the Kairos 7 mobile app where you'll see the three options here. Lake Stevens versus Lincoln, Central Kitsap versus Lakes, and Franklin Pierce versus Washington. We'll highlight the game with the most votes next Friday right here on Cairo 7 at 11 o'clock. Voting is only open until the end of the show, so the clock is ticking. So much to choose your matchup, and we will see it right here on Cairo 7. We'll also have the results for you at the end of the show. Okay, let's move right along. A big matchup over at CenturyLink Field. JFK against Bethel. It was so big, it was on national television. ESPN, the U. Bethel giving Kennedy a game. Will Latu gets the direct snap and kind of feels his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Braves cut the lead to five late in the third quarter, but midway through the fourth, Sam Hewitt. The kid could throw just like his dad and his uncle. It is a better catch, though. Justin Baker laying out for it. Got the announcer all fired up. It also allowed Kennedy to hang on for the win, not by much, 32-27 but they do get it done at the clink. And from there, we head down south. Lakes will be one of the better teams chasing Lincoln in the PCL 3A. Tonight, the Lancers kicked off at Capitol, and that was not all they kicked. Uh, check out the run from Devin Nafoa Masoe. Set up the first touchdown as he drags tacklers to the one. And then they went to the air. Justin Brennan to Jadon Hall. Throw it up and let your guy go up and get it. A fabulous catch from Hall as he is falling in the end zone. It was 14-0 Lancers. They were not done, though. After a fumble recovery, Brennan over the middle, in stride, all the way for the score. And this was an easy one for Lakes. Uh, they let off the gas a little bit. 46-21, the final. Time for a quick break, but when we stay down south, when we come back, we'll talk Tumwater, Bellarmine, Peninsula, all of that on the way, plus the defending 3A champs, Eastside Catholic, taking on Grant Union of Sacramento. They came all the way up here for a football game. Stay with us. We're back after your weekend forecast. Welcome back once again to the Jack in the Box High School Football Report. Last season, Peninsula and O'Day met in the opening week of the season. They also met in the 3A state quarters. The Irish won both times. So tonight, the Seahawks looking for payback in Purdy. Two teams with good offenses, but this was really all about the defense. Be the ball. Peyton Bice intercepted by Hayden McDonald. The Irish... Well, they took advantage of that. They marched right down the field in the very next drive. Milton Hopkins is going to call his own number on the keeper for the opening score of the game. And the Irish were looking good from there on out. The Seahawks defense did catch a break, however, a few minutes later. Hopkins fumbled the snap. Nolan Casey fell on it for Peninsula. So they think they got some momentum going, but then they try to get a little tricky with it. On the following drive, it went bad quickly. The double pass. Receivers got it, right? He's 
He should have just ate that ball because he throws another pick, and McDonald was there for it. O'Day pitching a 21-0 shutout on the road to start the year. Staying in 3A, Eastside Catholic hosting Grant Union, a storied program from Sacramento. They might have wanted to stay in California. A tough competition. They got it on the plateau. Aiden Hector, pick six for the touchdown for the Crusaders. They can attack through the air as well, but their specialty is to run it right at you. Gio Ursino gets loose. Nobody's catching him. Eastside Catholic on cruise control, but Ursino wasn't finished. Still in the second quarter. Uh, watch him here. After the celebration, of course, he's going to get the ball cut right and get it into the end zone one more time. Crusaders dominated their... Friends from Sacramento, 40 to 13. Not a surprise. They look like the number one team in the state in 3A. All right, let's go back up north. Glacier Peak in the early game of a doubleheader at Edmonds Woodway. Tyson Lang running the offense for the Grizz, and he did that very well. He, nowhere to throw it, so, you know, tuck it and run. That's the best, next best thing, right? Uh, so 20 yards to the score goes Tyson Lang. And then in the first quarter, still in the first quarter, showing off his arm, a wide open Patrick McKenzie, 14 yards to the score. Uh, Warriors did find the end zone as well, but Glacier Peak pretty much ran away with it, 35 to 14. Also in 4A, Tone Center for Puyallup and Bellarmine in SPSL. One of the few conference matchups around the area, 7-3 Vikings in the second quarter. Sermon Wilson with the sack, and Bellarmine doesn't reach the end zone in the first half. And Puyallup usually about going to the air, but not this game. Ground and pound. Danny Uyali. Fools everyone for the touchdown. Next drive for Puyallup. Ziri Ford sneaks one under the pile. Lions do not score. Puyallup gets one more touchdown. I shouldn't say they didn't score. They did kick a field goal. 28 to 3. All right, in 2A, Tom Water poised to be in the playoffs once again, but right off the bat, they had to avoid the letdown hosting Timberline, and, and that really was no issue. Jack Jones, what an interception by Jones diving there. He had two of them on the night. That set up the big bomb. Cody Whalen to a wide open Danny Goodburn. He's waiting for it and just hauls it in for the touchdown. That It was already 33-0 at that point. They did not take their foot off the gas, however. Another interception and then Hunter Baker on the fly sweep. No one from Timberline keeps contained. And he's in for a 41-0 lead. Yeah, there's your final, 55-0. Tumwater looking strong in 2A. Our photographers also work on Thursday, at least one of them did. Kentwood let the game slip away at Skyline last season in the opener. Well, the Cogs got some payback last night. Daniel Buxton sacked by Alfonso Wack. Skyline settled for a field goal. Buxton had to leave with an injury, and Kentwood took full advantage in the second quarter. Third and goal. Gabriel Johnson punching it in, and then Johnson one more time as it was 6-3. Kentwood still in the second quarter. Uh, Kentwood looking good, same way. A three-yard run. Cox held skyline to that lone field goal. Great defensive effort, 29-3, the final. All right, uh, we mentioned voting for next week's fan favorite matchup would last until the end of the show. Well, we're at the end of the show, and we have a winner. Your fan favorite is Franklin Pierce versus Washington. All down south there, and we'll feature those two teams on Friday night. Thanks to our sponsor, All City Fence, for all that voting, and for you guys for taking the time to actually do it. That's going to do it for the Jack in the Box High School Football Report. More scores and highlights on Cairo7.com. We'll be right back.